say the word environment and somehow wide open spaces and endangered species are usually the first things that spring to mind. It's easy to forget that we as human beings have the biggest environmental impact of all and our need for food has a lot to do with this. With that in mind, Utica decided to create a special menu inspired by World Environment Day and it's loaded with eco-friendly flavour. Going green on World Environment Day isn't just about preparing a vegetarian meal, it's about adopting a greener lifestyle too. I'm using simple ingredients to make a hearty vegetarian feast. On the menu, potato, chickpea and spinach curry to go with that fenugreek or methi paratas and for dessert, a luscious lime and lavender cake. Let's get cooking. For the lime and lavender cake, it's quite easy to get some lavender out the garden and it grows quite easily too. Lavender just loves the sun, and so do I. I'm going to use this lavender to garnish the cake, and it smells absolutely fragrant. The first ingredient for the cake, soft butter into a mixing bowl. Let's beat this until it's light and fluffy. Always use ingredients at room temperature. Now some sugar. Add some lime zest, or you could also use lemon zest for this. Vanilla essence or paste. And now gradually add the egg with a touch of flour. That's ready. The butter, eggs and sugar is light and fluffy. Scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl. Adding a little flour while you're adding the egg prevents the butter from curdling. Salt going into the flour. I've got the baking powder and bicarb in here already. And lightly mix that. Add half the flour to the butter and egg. And lightly mix that. Yogurt now going in and always at room temperature. And fold that in. The remaining flour now going in. Swirl the flour through. Work quite gently or you'll be sending up clouds of flour. And to get more flavour, some lime juice or lemon juice. Scrape the bottom of the bowl and work those ingredients together. I've greased and lined three baking tins. Scrape the bowl. Now with a teaspoon, smooth that batter down. Bake the cakes off in a preheated oven, 170 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes. This is what I call curry in a hurry. First ingredient, sunflower oil into the pan. I love quick and easy curries, but they should always be full of flavor. Cinnamon stick and a pinch of cumin seeds. Fry those off in hot oil. Chopped onion. Season the onion with some salt. You don't have to make a complicated dish to make it flavorsome. This is a tribute to simple food. The onion's ready. Two teaspoons of red chilli powder on top of the onion. And next, ginger and garlic. And gently stir that into the hot oil. Chopped tomatoes. The lighter the tomato, the better the flavour. Use the spoon and break that down. Add half a teaspoon of ground cumin into the tomato, half a teaspoon of ground coriander and a pinch of turmeric. 
I always add the spices once the tomato has been added. That's to prevent them from burning. The tomato is cooked down. Add some boiled water. And stir that in. Place the potatoes into the sauce. I've got some par-cooked potatoes. You could either boil or fry them. Chickpeas. Now let that simmer until the flavors penetrate the potatoes. Cover the pan, reduce the heat, and leave that to simmer. Now I'm going to get started on the methi or fenugreek burritos. I'm going to get some water boiled. We've got some flour here, salt, ajwine or carom seeds. You can get these at an Indian supermarket. Stir those ingredients around to make sure they're well combined. And then we need a cup of boiled water. Use a wooden spoon and mix the ingredients together. Now sunflower oil. Pour that in. Let's get rid of the spoon. And work those ingredients together. The dough is quite soft. It comes together really easily. And another tip for you is also start with a smaller quantity when you're making these. Sometimes it's just so much dough and you can get a bit anxious. A little quantity works well. This is slightly firmer than roti dough. Quite easy to work with. And let's divide this into four. Just feel them to make sure they sort of round about right and even. Roll them into rounds. Pinch the creases together and flatten that out. Cover the dough with a cloth. That's to prevent it from drying out. Let's get the pan on to heat. On a medium heat. Now for the filling. I've got some boiled grated potatoes in here. Seasoned with salt chopped coriander. You could also add a touch of green chili. I'm serving it with quite a spicy curry, so it's not necessary here. Ginger. And we've got kasuri methi. This is dried fenugreek or dried methi. You can get this at any spice store, Indian spice store that is. Work those ingredients together. And if you like, a pinch of turmeric going in. Filling's ready. Got a ball of dough here. And flatten that out. Just make sure it's thicker in the center and thinner around the edges. So you're forming almost a little bowl. And scoop some of that potato and fenugreek or methi filling into the center. And just gently gather up the edges. It's almost like a money bag. And that's what it should look like. Quite smooth on the top, and you can see some creases at the bottom. Always make sure you flour the work surface well. And gently roll them out. And you can see the coriander and fenugreek starting to show through. I press down slightly harder on the one side just to get the dough to turn around. And that's our first pirata done. Next one. Having your hands on top of the rolling pin prevents you from having uneven pressure. Number three. It's as easy as that. And the first pirata onto a hot pan. And we're using a dry pan for this. You can feel it starting to bubble up. Flip the pirata over, drizzle over some melted butter or ghee. That looks perfect. We always joke about the first one being the one served to the mother-in-law. <laughs> but I think this one's going to be fine. It's good enough to serve to my mom. The potato has been simmering with the chickpeas on a low heat. Fresh cream, pour that in. It's 
swirl the cream through and lastly sprinkle some baby spinach on top does look like I'm adding a fair bit of spinach to this curry. After a minute, it sort of disappears. I'll leave that to simmer. Remember not to cover this up. That's our potato, chickpea and spinach curry done. The cakes are now cool. I'm putting the first one onto a cake plate. I've prepared some buttercream frosting. Scoop some of the frosting on top. You could also use fresh cream mascarpone for this. Smooth that down. What I love about this cake is that you don't have to slice off the top. It's quite an even cake to assemble. A little more buttercream. And the last layer. Swirl that over. I quite like having the sides unfrosted. And next, because it's Earth Day, can't resist a touch of colour. Dip a teaspoon into some green food colouring. Just use the spatula and swirl that over. And then I've got some purple gel food colouring, a touch of that going on top and again gently swirl that on top. To garnish the lavender from the garden I'm just pulling some of the lavender flowers off the stems. You can put some lavender stems in the centre of the cake, it does look quite pretty. And that's the cake done. My mom and gran always had a way of taking simple ingredients and turning them into a magical feast. That's what I've done to celebrate World Environment Day today. We've got potato, chickpea and spinach curry to go with that delicious methy or fenugreek parathas. And for dessert, that luscious lime and lavender cake. I think I'm going to tuck in.